Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radamic. Berto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We're going to have a great show for you today. Today is a show that we are going to examine a whole lot of what journalists have been doing here. And you know what? It's a good thing that so many now have really changed their stance on how they actually call the news, how they actually calls out, call out the president. We've done some of that before. But anyhow, folks, we are going to have a great show for you today. Uh, let's see. Michael Rudnan, welcome aboard. He says, this right here is how capitalism fails people. When so many of the people don't have water to drink, food to eat, nor homes to live in, they all have nothing to lose and revolution will follow. Perfecto, perfecto. Perfecto. That is the case. And in fact, in, in one of my books, that's exactly what I said, Brother Rudnan. The thing is, the thing is, when you don't have anything to lose, you don't have anything to lose. And thus, those who have something to lose are the ones that really are then at peril. You know, and by the way, Rudnan, I, I think I answered uh, one of your, your things that I said I was going to look into that. Uh, that is a that is a subject I think deserves a whole lot of coverage. I love the way that you prefaced it in the sentence that you wrote right there. Uh, he also says Texas has U.S. Supreme Court to help Trump append election. Can you believe that? Can you believe that a Texas uh, attorney general is going to try to sue four states? With the Supreme Court. And the only reason he's doing that is the only way you can get a case straight up to the Supreme Court like that, it has to be state against state. That goes directly to the Supreme Court, right? But if you have somebody doing something, it has to go through the district courts and all that kind of stuff. So all of these are tricks that are being used here, folks. All of these are tricks. Good for pulling that up. Bridge MPP, Mike on a roll. Welcome aboard. And the other one, the precedent against such an action. The 11th Amendment prevents federal courts from exercising jurisdictions over state defendants. The federal court will not even hear a case if a state is a defendant. A state may not be sued in... Well, yeah, so that, that's the kind of machinations that have to go through brothers and sisters. Tank 28 is here, I guess. Wow. Uh, he's, he's concerned, I figure. Mike says, that was the thing I wanted you to look into. Water futures set to join likes of gold and oil and trade on Wall Street for the first time ever. Actually, though, let me just say what's one thing, Radnin. There was this guy in Texas. He bought up a whole lot of water rights throughout Texas, okay? This has been in the works for a very, 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 very long time. Uh, where this guy, uh, I, he, he just died. He, he wanted to bring natural gas as the, the bridge between oil and, and, and all the um, green energies, right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. They've been buying up water rights for a long time. Look on, on uh, Netflix. I don't remember the name of the, sh the, the program. Just look up water on Netflix. Look at what's happening in Nigeria with all the plastic bottles and all the water companies migrating to Nigeria because, you know, they keep, they, they keep the water dirty. They make sure that you don't have infrastructure and then they sell you the water. That is what we do here as well. We do it in a lot of things. We make sure you get sick. We make sure you don't have uh, universal health care and then we can then transfer your wealth over. I mean, this is just standard modus operandi that we have to be cognizant of and when people like yourself bring those things out senor that is exactly what happens um Rudnan. that is exactly what happens okay let's see bridge says yes politics and right with egberto red that's what is what i'm referring to exacto mundo the water issue in other countries starving water and you know what is so funny uh bridge you take a look at we are surrounded, we are more water than anything else. Salinated water can be desalinated, right? Uh, are you talking about Brave Blue World? No, that's not the one, uh, Rudnan. It, it's one that, that talks about Nigeria. It talk, it, it's a series that talks a whole lot about... Uh, I'm going to find it and then get it, get it to you guys. But it, it's an important Netflix thing. There, there's so much that people don't understand that's going on. I, uh, while I'm doing my spinning, I watch a lot of the Netflix documentaries. There's one, and what gets me is these things don't get the notoriety that they should, because there's a lot of good documentaries out there that spread the word. People just don't get it, and because they don't get it, what happens then is people make bad choices. So you can have. Tank 28 really believe that Trump is the best thing since apple pie since he doesn't understand that what Trump stands for takes away from him. 
But one of these days he'll get it. I have faith that one of these days he'll get it. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get the program started. We are going to get the program started. Title of the show today. These journalists keep the pressure on failed on a failed Trump. Egberto is blood and water. I, I'm not sure. I, I, if I told you I knew what it was, I would be lying. So I don't even remember titles. Come on, I'm not as young as you are, uh, Michael Rudnan. Come on now. Come on now. Okay. All right. Let, 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 let's go ahead and get this. Um, uh, these journalists keep the pressure on a failed Trump. Good and bad journalism. COVID reality. As Trump tried to put his loss in doubt, pundits keep the pressure on the failed president. Good and bad journalists in action, and we. but we want to start with a COVID reality. And I want to play this because what I find is, um, I love, I love, uh, uh, what's her name? I, I, I love Stephanie Rule. This woman is great. Uh, she's, you know, she, she understands the cons. She's an empathetic, rich woman is what I always call it. And that is, a, when you find empathetic people, it is just, uh, it is just the best thing since apple pie. So let's go ahead and play her because she, her entire family got COVID-19. And what she had to say about it wasn't something that she learned. It was something that she pretty much knew. And let's take a look at that and then take it on the other side. You know, I love to see when journalists not only get it, live it, but empathize with it. And this is exactly what we have with Stephanie Rule with regards to COVID-19 and how it's being handled in its entirety by the government. Check this out, then we'll take it on the other side. I want you to know I did all the right things. I wore a mask, I kept my distance, but still I got COVID. And I realized that doing the right thing isn't enough. Our federal government isn't giving the incentive or the punitive consequences to influence the decisions we're making every day. Here's the truth. Millions cannot afford to deal with the virus and millions more refuse. And we don't have a vaccine yet. This virus isn't over. And now is not the time to get complacent, please. This is our reality. And what is most concerning is that our government is doing very little to make these guidelines any easier to follow. The right thing is a lot easier the more privileged you are. COVID doesn't care if you're rich, poor, black, white, young, old. COVID doesn't care if it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, or your birthday. But how we manage this virus is a whole lot easier if you are lucky to have the privilege of support. The only way we can get through this is to have a system that works for everyone. And after having COVID, I know now more than ever, we absolutely do not. We've got to change that. I tell you what is the most disconcerting part of that entire thing that she said there. Where a privileged woman understands the problem, understands that government needs to play a role, understand that we have to have a safety net, understand that we have to have a healthcare system that supports us all. And unfortunately, many of the people that are fighting against making the progress to attain that, to ensure that what we're suffering under COVID-19 right now, where we could have good support from a good social safety net from a rich country who can afford to do it. Most of the people that are stopping that progress are those influenced by that plutocracy that have them believing that supporting policies that will make life better for them is somehow something that is socialist or something that is communist or something that uh, they don't want folks we have to do better if somebody in Stephanie Rule's class sees it and those who need it most can't we have a lot of work to do okay before I go to the other one uh, Lee Grant says when I need health care info I go to my primary care physician not the federal government give it a try Nobody, who, I, I, Lee Grant, 
who wants you to go to the federal government when you need uh, when you need uh, your 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 care? Nobody wants you to do that. That is that those are the those are the things that really cr- may allow us to make uh, the wrong choices. You have bought into the lie. In other words, government take care, government take over of healthcare. That's not true. I mean, I, you have to understand the difference between paying for healthcare and also providing the healthcare services. The most efficient form of healthcare, brother uh, 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 um, Lee Grant, is if you have one payer. All of us pay taxes into a healthcare system, and you are allowed to go to any care center, any facility, any doctor, any hospital. Right now, if you have a healthcare policy, a private healthcare policy, you have to decide what plantation you want to be your master. They tell you if you sign up with Cigna, these are the hospitals you can use. These are the medicines that you can use. These are the procedures that you can have. If you go to uh, some other one, uh, let's say if you go to Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can choose this. If you go to another one, you can choose this. That is not choice. That is saying which plantation you want to live on. We are trying to free you by saying everybody pays taxes and then you choose an available doctor, an available procedure, and your doctor and you decide the procedures you need. Not somebody trying to make a profit by minimizing the care that they give you. This is not rocket science, but they've invested a lot of money to do two things for you. One, to let you believe that government is bad, right? That is the first thing that the Paul Manifesto said they had to do to you. They had to make you believe government is bad. How could they do that? There was a time that we said, we the people create and we the people are, you know, make government. We the people. If government is bad, we the people are bad. So they had to detach people from government. And after they've psychologically detached you from government, then they could let you believe government is bad. And if you believe government is bad, you stop doing the things necessary to make sure government satisfies you. And by doing that, the private sector control by the plutocracy can then control you. By somehow you thinking that, wait a minute, the private sector works better than government. That is not true. Look, the private sector does... Look, I, I, am a, I believe in the private sector for certain things, for most things. All right. I don't want the private. I I want the. You have your sandwich shop, your your dry cleaners, your uh, all these things should be private. Yeah, because you you know doesn't. But the things that are essential to life must be we the people. Essential to life must be we the people. All these things that 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 we talk about here has nothing to do with other than making everybody's lives better, including yours, those people who have been brainwashed into believing that somehow government is bad. If government is bad, you are bad. And I know I ain't bad. I know Bridge MCP is not bad. Michael Rudnan is not bad. Not even Tank 28 is bad, although you know, you're know you believing that Paul Fleming is not bad. Okay, so I, I needed to get that in before I go to the second tape. Now, the second tape... Tiffany Cross, I love this young lady. She just got her show on MSNBC, and now she's going to replace the first uh, weekend, or rather the first day of AM Joy, so new program. But here's what she had to say. I I love what she had to say. I remember when Bush came into office. So many of us thought that there couldn't be a less intelligent person coming to the presidency, and it turns out that um, uh, we successfully beat that with Donald Trump. And How could that happen? How could Bush become the president? Not his brother, but George W. Bush. How did he become the president? And then how did Donald Trump become the president? What were those forces that allowed him to be there? Could somebody like Barack Obama have the same type of credentials and mistakes and all of that and still be considered a good president or even become president? Would somebody as catastrophic as Donald Trump has been to America? Donald Trump single-handedly, with the help of his sycophants and enablers, 
have put this country in dire straits. I mean, have, this country is in trouble financially, economically, health-wise. The destruction that emanated from this guy's presidency is just astounding. And it just came down to me listening today to uh, Tiffany Cross. And one sentence, a couple of sentences that she made, kind of put it all, all together. Listen to it and then let's take it on the other side. Jason, you know, uh, being raised in households like we were, we were raised to distrust the system. Everyone yes. around me keeps saying the system is going to work. He's going to leave. These people are the human embodiment of why we are so distrustful of a system that is routinely and historically and consistently harmed us. And so now we see the results of centuries of white supremacy that have elevated this very below average basic, unintelligent man to the highest office in the land is his first job in government being president of the United States. And here we are in the grips of a global pandemic that disproportionately harms black and brown folks and a, a increasingly problematic economy while these bread lines are getting longer. And, and I should point out that he's also rushing through executions, uh, federal executions uh, at, at this point uh, in, in his presidency. So I am terrified of what's to come. Um, but I do anticipate that we will, that the war is not over, you know, that there are still battles right. to be fought uh, as he is the outgoing president. Uh, and I hope that he eventually accepts that. Well, I'm not hoping that he accepts that because he will never accept that. I am not terrified. I am resolved. I think we all have to be resolved. Everybody, including clear thinking Republicans have to be resolved never to do this again, never to, to allow the evils of our past ideologies to allow somebody of his caliber to get into office, somebody that is distinctly flawed, not distinctly flawed, fatally flawed for a country, to never allow this again to happen. And if we do, 74 million people could have... Uh, accidentally get this guy re-elected. We dodged the bullet by a few hundred thousand votes, but we have to make sure to educate America into forgetting some of its past that will allow, or that could allow somebody like another Donald Trump to become president of the United States and really then destroy the country. Okay, let me go. You know what? Today I'm going to answer a lot of these questions in between these videos because I have a, quite a few of them. Um, I, I saw one uh, from Lee Grant again. Lee Grant says, replying, I need no referral and have a large choice of specialists, including my lady cardiologist. The mere fact that you said you have a large choice of specialists. If I were to tell you, if you're having a heart problem, Lee Grant, and I look at you and I tell you, hey, Lee, I met this guy that is working for this other group, you couldn't go see that guy, Lee. On, you know, they may have to make special exception because they are your masters. When government, when you have single-payer health care, you go see anybody who has an available appointment for you to see. Again, the framing, they have taught you to feel okay to be enslaved. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, and people, sometimes people say, hey, brother, why do you use that slave word so often? Let me tell you why I use the slave word often. Because, first of all, as a black person, right, I understand what slavery used to be, right? And I also understand that the only reason we got rid of slavery is that a plutocracy found a more efficient way to, 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 a more efficient way to use people. At first... It was easy, right? You go ahead and you get the slaves over and the slaves do all the work and all that kind of stuff. But then things change. We got technology. We got the cotton gin. We got all these other things that work that reduce the need for that kind of labor. So we just let those folks go. That's why after the Civil War, it wasn't so hard, right? But the plutocracy still needs to eat. And what it does is it finds different methods of doing, doing things, right? So the new method is to create a bifurcated society. We have the management class and then everybody else. And the management class controls everything. The TV, news, it controls everything. And it gives you a false sense of security. Now, here's the interesting thing. 
Americans were getting, when the, the unions came out in the 20s and the 30s, they were getting smart. Americans started to get smart. They started to say, wait a minute, why is it that I'm doing the work for Henry Ford? And I can't even buy a Ford car. And then Henry Ford started to see the truth and he said, oh, I better pay my people a better salary so they can at least buy a car. But that wasn't enough. The people started to ask, but wait a minute, let's ask some deeper questions. Why is it that I do all this work, but I can never, I, the skyscrapers that we build, I can never go into them after it's done. I can, I can be the one doing all of the work, but I can never see the outcomes of the work that I do because somebody makes more from the work that I do. And they started to, they built unions and the union started to say, I want a piece of the pie. So pa Lewis Powell, a Democrat, Lewis Powell, wrote the thing called the Powell Manifesto, the Powell Memo. The Powell Memo went to the Chamber of Commerce and all these guys. And what they realized is that they had to dummify the country. They had to make the country dumb. Because as you become more intelligent, you start to ask the question, why are you doing all the work and Bessos take all the pay? So they started to make you believe that asking for what's yours was communism, socialism, and all these other isms that are bad, right? And then they equate it with all the bad societies out there. That's what they needed to do, right? They needed to do that because you were becoming intelligent and you were asking the questions, why? Jeff Bezos doesn't know a photo cell, but he sells a lot of them. Jeff Bezos doesn't know how to build, build, build a, 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 a shredder, but he sells them. And he makes all the profits off of these things. And if you try to compete with him, he makes sure that he can get the price of delivery cheaper than you can. So therefore, he takes you out of the market. And I've told many a times the story about one click. I won't repeat this one click story that I developed a few times ago. So what I'm saying, do not be fooled into this fallacy of how things work. Let me go through before I go to the next video and see if anybody is saying anything. Uh, Paul Fleming says... Uh, uh, to get tech for data every year, it has to be approved by insurance company. My doctor has to send a letter each year. Now that there's a generic drug that came out for this, I no longer have to go through the process. For 10 years, I had to go through all that stress. Think about it. Oh, Tank28 says, Jeff Bezos is the bad guy. Got it. Yes, he is the bad guy. Right? Bad guys wear suits and ties. When... When these guys ensure that the little guy cannot work because they have something called capital, they're not the bad guy in the regular sense, but they are the bad guys because they take over, not because of what they're worth, but because of, what our because of how we've defined our economics. We can change it, but we have to be bold enough and not fall for the crap that they try to brainwash us with to change it. These are not, these, and the funny thing about it is nothing that I'm saying here is rocket science. Nothing here is rocket science. Michael Rudnan says, uh, Paul Fleming, that $5 billion in, in free air time. Yes, you're right. Donald Trump became president because even the plutocracy was able to monetize Donald Trump. You put Donald Trump on TV. Donald Trump brings so many eyeballs, they could sell so many more commercials with Donald Trump. So even as Donald Trump is bad for the United States, the, the president of CBS says, but he's the best thing that has ever happened to us financially. Because when he was on, we could monetize Donald Trump. It's always about the dollar. It's never about you. So while you fight for Donald Trump, many of you fight for Donald Trump. So while many of you fight for the rich guy, the plutocracy, they don't give a holy hoot about you. I guess I am privileged to some enslaved to others. Uh, again, you know something, you may, go figure, you may look at that as something funny, right, Lee Grant, when you say, I guess I'm privileged to some, but enslaved to others. But actually what you just said is, is true. It's a true statement what you just said. It's an absolutely true statement. For the, people that are, for the people that are below you in the pecking order, you are privileged. However, for the people on top of you, they know that they have you as a slave. They know that they control you by what they have offered to give you. 
So your statement while you're saying it in jest is actually pretty damn true. I guess I'm privileged to some and enslaved to others. Sir, with all due respect, you are absolutely right. Uh, let's see. I saw, let's see, uh, uh, let's see. Fleming says, I saw one of the reporters saw that they had to cover Trump at times because he's the president. Actually, they didn't have to cover his lies. They could have immediately corrected his lies. They didn't many times. Okay, the fraud is obvious and the fraud was in place in 2016. True Patriots blocked it. Trump won that. Trump never, well, uh, Tank, we tolerate you here because we hope that at some point in time, I don't know if, if, if I don't know what goes on in your mind. I really don't. But hopefully at some time, something is going to resonate with you. And that goes for everybody that's here, including myself. You know, maybe Tank says something that resonates with me. Who knows? You know, that's what we're here for, that dialogue, right? So, it's cool. Rudin says, like, better to other times, I think the reason we have Trump is that the mainstream media gave... Oh, well, I, I, I spoke to that already. Uh, anyhow, let's go ahead and get to the other video and then we'll move on from there when you guys give some more messages. So let's, oh wow, time is flying and I haven't even gotten through half of these guys. I may have to save some for tomorrow. Listen to Scarborough. Scarborough gets it. Scarborough, as, uh, after he got married to this uh, real progressive woman, a lot of his stance changed. Listen to Scarborough and then we'll take it on the other side. Let me uh, play for you a clip from uh, President Trump uh, in Georgia over the weekend, Trump's uh, first rally since losing re-election. And as expected, he called everyone victims. Watch. <laughs> We're all victims. Everybody here, all these thousands of people here tonight, they're all victims, every one of you. This is obviously not the first time uh, he's claimed such yeah. persecution throughout his presidency. Uh, is this his way just of shirking responsibility for his loss? I mean, what do you make of this? You've got a guy who inherited $400 billion from his father. His companies went bankrupt time and time again. He's always bailed out. The guy's... Yeah, like at like what a 757 before he was president of the United States helicopters penthouses and the guy's claiming victimhood uh, and and it's it's that is it just cut uh, that uh, that clip and and explain the Republican Party over the past 10 15 20 years always claiming victimhood and usually it's rich white billionaires and millionaires uh, are people with Ivy League degrees that are claiming some populist BS, claiming that somehow they've been victimized. I love when I see uh, Republican senators who went to Ivy League schools claiming victimhood yeah. <laughs> and claiming that they're men of the people and uh, that a guy like me that went to the University of Alabama and University of Florida Law School somehow is an elitist. It's just pure garbage, and the Democrats need to call them out on it. And the Democrats need to call him out on it. Here is a former, actually not a former, he's a very conservative guy. And even when, when, when you have uh, Joe Scarborough calling out Republicans, you know something has really, really gone haywire. Okay, anyway, we are at the half of our show right now. So this is the part where I do my quick ask. I'm going to spend two minutes to do this and I ask you to stay with me. Folks, if you are on here, please consider going to, uh, if you're on YouTube, please consider either supporting the show with a super chat or go ahead and click the join button and become a part of our posse. Watch Breach called uh, our PDR posse. So become a part of our PDR Posse, Politics and Right Posse, by clicking that Join button. If you join right now, I'll call you out and, and, um, and, and do that. And soon, we have quite a few members that are, I, I, I want to do a, 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 um, a Zoom chat with all the folks that are in the PDR Posse. A lot of people, though, I, I put it out a couple of times and people haven't shown a whole lot of interest. I mean, they, they, they support the show and they, 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 they pay their $1.99, but... When it comes to, okay, let's go ahead and have a 
a, a video. Oh, they're just happy to support the show. But I would like to get more people actually talking on Zoom. You know, got 50, 60, 70 people or more talking on Zoom at the same time. So uh, if, if you are on, please go ahead and click that join button. Become a part of our PDR Posse. If you are not on YouTube, let's say you are on Facebook, Twitch, or, uh, or Periscope, please go ahead and click that that I just put in there. It's called politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube, politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube, and you can join our posse directly from uh, either Facebook. It'll, it'll bring you to the YouTube so that you can join our posse on YouTube. Now, uh, that book on the screen, uh, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors. Man, I, I got the biggest uh, kudos yesterday. I was on a call for Coffee Party USA, and one of the leaders of Coffee Party USA, we were talking about what we needed to do going forward as far as how to get the message out. And she just gave a good kudos, touched my heart, where she says, uh, people need to read this book because if they read, uh, if they read It's Worth It, they'll, they'll, they kind of get how to talk to folks as well and respect other people as well as demand other people respect them. And so it was great hearing the kudos. So again... Uh, that link that I have there, it's an Amazon link. You can get it at Amazon right now. So please consider getting my book. It's worth it. I have a whole lot of other books there. So if you go to Amazon, you'll see all the other books that I have as well. But if you want to cut out the middle person, just go ahead and go to my store, politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. And that way you can go ahead and get it directly from us. Uh, again, your choice. If you get it from us, we send you a, a, a ask uh, Paul. We send you a um, a a sticker, a uh, bumper sticker, all that good stuff. But you can also support us via Patreon. P a that's politicsandright.com slash p a t r e o n. Politicsandright.com slash p a t r e o n. Politicsandright.com slash Patreon. Or you can, of course, support us via PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. I thank you so kindly for all of you who support the program. You are the only way we can have all this stuff here to do a broadcast, to do our blogs, to put our uh, stuff out there. What is it that you're supporting when you support us? What you support in... We are one of many people that populate the internet with the progressive message. And what you have is the right can pay a whole lot of people to just dump stuff. I get I get stuff from the right all the time wanting to push papers to put on my website. In other words, they'll write complete papers with hyperlinks that send you to particular right-wing sites. I get that all of the times. So of course, I ignore the right-wing ones. Uh, but what we do here is all the blogs that I write, all the video that I do, everything is out there to populate the space the left not the left wing space but the internet space that way when people start doing searches or whatever they don't only pull up right wing stuff they can pull up our stuff that has that uh that progressive message as well so when you support us that is what you're supporting you're not only supporting this one show you're supporting all the other things that we do to populate the internet okay let's go ahead and continue the program ted cruz decided that he doesn't think the election is fair and he just, check it out, we'll take it on the other side. Ted Cruz, a Harvard-educated lawyer. Ted Cruz, a very intelligent person we know. Ted Cruz, the guy who Donald Trump maligned his wife, maligned his father. Ted Cruz, the guy who said that Donald Trump was a liar that Donald Trump was pretty much no good. Donald Trump just, oh, he, he castigated Donald Trump like no one else. And this is Ted Cruz about the 2020 election. Check this out. When you look at a country where 39% of Americans right now believe this last election was rigged, that's a real problem for confidence in the integrity of our electoral system. And so I'm hopeful the Supreme Court will step forward to its responsibility and resolve this case and resolve other cases as needed. Let's be clear here. People believe the election is rigged because Donald Trump and his enablers have convinced people that the elections are rigged. And that, stated by Cruz himself, is 39%. Let's see. 
If 39% thinks the election was rigged, that means 61% does not believe the election was rigged. I would say that is a substantive majority. What's the problem? And why should the Supreme Court get into a case where most Americans know what really happened? Are we trying to placate 39% over 61%? Come on, folks. This is a caricature that puts us below Banana Republic. Think about that. Hey, Lee Grant, you get it, brother. You get it, brother. You see, that's what happened when we talk. Politics makes strange bedfellows. Uh, if you look at the corresponding blog that I wrote for that video, you'll see exactly, uh, it, it actually makes your point, Lee, because what happened is that you wonder how, how, uh, how, you're right, Bruce, he said absolutely nothing of substance. And that's why in the, uh, let me just go ahead and put the um, link in here. This is what I wrote for that particular thing, right? Because look at all the things that Donald Trump did to, to uh, Brother Cruz. Look at what he did to Brother Cruz. But uh, Cruz, you, you, you wonder uh, where they are. You wonder why they're doing what they're doing. Anyhow, um, but a lot of this happened because there wasn't the pushback from the media. What we have really started to see is that the media has been getting much better. And I, I mean, you have to call a spade a spade. And I honestly think they're trying because I think they are starting to notice that they've been too far. Now, they can't go completely like independent media because, I mean, they still have to sell those high-priced drugs, right? They still have to make sure that oil is still sold. So they can't go full-fledged full, full -fledged progressive or anything like that. But they can do better to prevent there from being a Trump again. Look at how this CNN, Ana Cabrera, did to uh, the guy in Georgia. I just loved it. Check this out. Big kudos to Ana Cabrera. That is a CNN host who really did not make our recent GOP hero, Gabriel Sterling, who came out and said, Donald Trump, stop messing with our people. We were happy with this guy. This guy is a Republican, but he seemed like a dignified Republican. Well, I want you to listen to this and see what Ana Cabrera had to do. But what she did was epic. What she did was necessary. And I, I want to see. I, I tell you, these women reporters are the ones that are kicking butt right now. They're the ones that are going out there and not letting these guys get away with anything. Check this out. The president wants to keep his people ginned up on this front. And I do think, as you were pointing out earlier, that it looks like this is going to affect Republican turnout. Like the gentleman at the last part of your clip there, he says he doesn't know who's going to vote because what, what does it matter? I've had to talk to personal friends who feel the same way. And I said, if you think you're being cheated, you know, at least make it harder for them to cheat you and go vote, please. We want everybody to go vote. It's really easy to vote in the state. Hey, you sound fed up. I know you're a Republican, and correct me if I'm wrong, you voted for President Trump. I just wonder, given where we are right now, do you regret that vote? I kind of wish, that, at least in my state, there would have been 13,000 more votes for him because my life would have been a heck of a lot easier. But, but with the situation we're in right now, he's, he's not acting as a responsible leader on this front. But I mean, it goes back to the people before when people were claiming that Hillary was cheated. I mean, it's, it's all sides and all things. Now, this is the, the flavor of the moment. This is the it's hot It's not spot. the same thing, though. It's not the same thing. He is the president of the United oh, States. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm not going to argue that point. He has a higher level of responsibility and should be held to a higher account, in my opinion. Well, Gabriel Sterling, we appreciate what you do. Thank you for coming on to try to set the record straight. Ana Cabrera, you did it perfectly. You don't ever let that slide because that sticks into the psyche of Americans. Oh yes, both sides do it. No, they don't. This was excellent journalism and this is the pushback that we are supposed to see from competent journalists. Absolutely so. Now let me show you what isn't excellent journalism and then we'll take it on the other side. Chuck Todd had Gabriel Sterling, the 
Republican hero who came out and said, hey, guys, you Donald Trump is lying. You've got to stop it. This is a Republican coming out against Donald Trump. But at the same time, he's a Republican trying to somehow have it both ways. So he went on to um, Chuck Todd. And when Chuck Todd asked him about, um, about w why he did what he did, one of the things he came out and said is, well, you know, also uh, it's done on both sides, a false equivalence. I want you to see how uh, Chuck Todd did it. And then we're going to show how it is supposed to be done by Ana Cabrera. Check this out. Because of people like your Secretary of State and your Governor. Mr. Sterling, you had made an impassioned plea there that we just played that this has to stop. It doesn't look like he chose to stop. Is there, it, Could you please debunk or um, what he said there when it comes to your role in the Georgia elections? At, at this point, it's, it's, it's a game of whack-a-mole, as we've been saying. The president's statements are false. There is information. They are stoking anger and fear among his supporters. And hell, I voted for him. The situation is getting much worse, and it's, it's an environment that's been built out over years. And it's not just, you know, Republicans on this side this time, but even in polling up to 2019, up to 50% of Democrats think Russians flipped votes on machines. So this is going both ways. It's undermining democracy. We've got to get to a point where responsible people act responsibly. Well, I'm just curious, um, what was it that sparked your decision to come out um, uh, as, uh, as, you know, to come out as direct as you came out earlier this week? Was there a specific incidents or incidents that have been happening to you or others? It wasn't happening. I mean, obviously, I have a police... Notice. Notice. Chuck Todd allowed that to slide. He goes to another question instead of saying, but sir, that's a false equivalence. Uh, what's happening? What happens with the people who think uh, that Hillary, uh, that the Russians were involved? All of these things weren't being pushed by the president. All these things weren't being pushed by leadership. All these, and, and first of all, the Russians did have something to do with the election. So let, let's get real here. Well, Ana Cabrera, she did the perfect job when he tried that same stunt at CNN yesterday. Check this out. He's not acting as a responsible leader on this front. But, I mean, it goes back to the people before, when people were claiming that Hillary was cheated. I mean, it's, it's all sides and all things. Now, this is the, the flavor of the moment. This is the it's hot It's not spot the right. same thing, though. It's not the same thing. He is the president of the United oh, States. No. Yeah, I'm not going to argue that point. He has a higher level of responsibility and should be held to a higher account, in my opinion. That is the way it is done. You have to hold the person you're interviewing accountable. If you don't hold them accountable, they do the same thing over and over again. Chuck, uh, Stephanopoulos did it as well today. What the uh, Secretary of State did not mention in Georgia, you know, the video where after a uh, counting place closed, uh, you see boxes of ballots coming out from underneath the table. I know that's kind of a graphic example, but... Uh, well, I have to stop you right you there. Got... No, that, uh, it wasn't mentioned because it didn't show anything improper. He's spoken to that this week. They said that was exactly the proper process for counting the ballots. There wasn't anything wrong shown in that video at all. So you're just throwing out a claim out there that, that, that doesn't prove what you're saying. We... And that is how you handle lying politicians. That is how you handle lying Republicans. Now, I, I want to play a longer piece from, uh, from George Stephanopoulos because that entire George Stephanopoulos interview, I was surprised how hard he was on this particular Republican, but it's worth seeing. You would think these Republican senators, even if they don't want to talk out against Donald Trump, they would want to remain reality-based. They would keep quiet. They won't come on, on TV. I don't know what's wrong with this senator from Indiana, but check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. But luckily, George Stephanopoulos did it very well this time. Check this out. Whether we would find widespread fraud, there's a wide gulf in between. And I think that when you just say that there's nothing there, you're going to have half of the country uh, uncertain about what just happened and disgruntled going into the future. Sir, I think it's pretty hard to argue that it's...
reflexively dismissed. What you've had since the election is certification processes in every state. So those include audits and in many states recounts. Those certifications have been done in many states led by Republican governors like Arizona and Georgia. There have been more than uh, 55 lawsuits brought forward by the president and his allies. 38 have been dismissed by judges. There have been investigations directed by the Justice Department, by the Attorney General. The Attorney General came back and said there's no evidence of widespread fraud. So the process has played out, hasn't it? And no evidence of widespread fraud. Why can't you accept the results? I think it's easy to say it's played out because that might be the uh, most convenient thing to say. But let's look at what the uh, Secretary of State did not mention in Georgia. You know, the video where after a uh, counting place closed, uh, you see boxes of ballots coming out from underneath the table. I know that's kind of a graphic example, but... Uh, well, I have to stop you right you there. Got... No, that uh, it wasn't mentioned because it didn't show anything improper. He's spoken to that this week. They see that was exactly the proper process <coughs> for counting the ballots. There wasn't anything wrong shown in that video at all. So you're just throwing out a claim out there that, that, that doesn't prove what you're saying. I think unless you scrutinize something like that further, or what about, like... It was scrutinized. Where there were... Where there were couple hundred thousand absentee ballots that got cast without a request for it. All I can tell you is if you don't at least give perfunctory kind of uh, investigation into it, uh, whether it's December 14th and what happens beyond, you're going to have a good part of the country. It's over 50 percent that view that something is amiss, and that's going to carry forward. Look at Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia. When you take the number of electoral votes associated with that roughly 40,000 vote popular margin, that's under half of what it was uh, back in 2016. So all I'm telling you is when you put two and two together, if we let the process play itself out, uh, regardless of what you're talking about in terms of unifying the country, there are going to be many people that are unsettled with the fact that we don't take it to its full control. Senator, you just mentioned three states, Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin. There were audits in those three states. There were recounts in those three states. Two of those states are led by Republican governors who certified the election results, saying there's no reason to doubt them. Jarge recounts are one thing, and we all know that they hardly ever change a uh, result of an election. Ballot integrity, a whole other issue. And uh, from the get-go, there was a dialogue on recounts, and uh, people have certified all this stuff. That, to me, is dismissing some of the evidence, sworn testimony that's out there. And if you don't carry it to its conclusion, you're going to have uneasiness going into the future. It has been carried to his conclusion. That is all we have time for this morning. Thanks very much. Let's be clear here. Joe Biden won by over 8 million, uh, over 7 million votes. That's a fact. Okay, he got over 81 million uh, votes. Now, it's also a fact that all of these things have been investigated. And notice that when Senator Braun was told, ah, you're trying to pull one out, uh, throw one out here, and Donald uh, and Stephanopoulos answered it, and he, he 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 called him out. He didn't have anything to say about what Stephanopoulos said was the fact. These guys know what they're doing. One of the reasons you see me give the average uh, Joe Blow uh, Republican, average Joe Blow conservative a, cha a, a, a chance, is because their leadership, the people that they think should be respectable, the people that they should respect. They are out there tailing ball face lies. So if they have a Senator Braun lying to them and a Democrat's trying to tell them the truth, the Democrat has to work a whole lot harder when you have this guy, a supposedly respected senator, doing that. So with all that we do as activists, let's take that into account when we're talking to those on the other side that their leadership, the ones that we, need to, that, that we need to extricate from the political system are the leadership of the Republicans. These are the most dangerous cats out there. That's where the problem lies. You nip the head and you can start doing something better with the rest of the folk. And you know, that is so important. You don't blame, you don't, you don't hit the other people too hard. 
you, the people that you want to hit hard are the, the leaders because they are the ones lying to people like our good friend here, Angela Caraway. Okay, Angela, I don't know if you have given uh, any money to Donald Trump or not, but if you've given any money to Donald Trump, and I don't know if you're wealthy or not, but if you've given money to Donald Trump, uh, most of that money, and he tell he told you, but most people don't w read the fine print. Every letter that he tells, he sends you, he has to put where that money is going. And Brother Rudnan is correct. That money is going straight into his pocket. And he told you that's what he's doing. If you read the fine print, he says, only after you make $8,000 in donation will some of it go to some fictitious uh, ju jury fund to, for his election. But otherwise, all that money goes to his PAC and also to the, 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 the RNC. That is where your money goes. So there we go, transferring money from the average Republican person to another rich billionaire, just like Republican Joe Scarborough said. They, they rip you off. Look, am I going to say that, oh, we don't have the Democrats doing the same thing? No, the Democrats do the same damn thing, but they kind of tell you when they're doing it, right? You know, you get all those emails from the Democrats. Oh, we're about to lose. We're about to lose. Send us some money. But they're not telling you that, oh, this money is going to a fund that doesn't really exist or something like that. Trump is actually stealing from you. You know, we know the Democrats are taking a whole bunch of money up to. And we also know that the Democrats are not using the money to the best either. They're giving it to their $10,000 uh, fee for this person and a $10,000 fee for this other consultant. Instead of giving $1,000 to a barber shop to try to round people up and teach them. You know, if we really wanted to, an economic system, a, a political system to work, all this money that these think tanks are collecting, they just go into the neighborhoods and give it to the barber shop and give it to the abarroterias, the, 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 side, uh, the side shop where people go buy their peanuts and all of that, and, 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 and encourage those people to start engaging others and say, hey, you need to vote, and you pay them. It's no different than paying the consultant $10,000 who then go ask other people in the community to volunteer for free. You know? So they all do the same thing, but some are actually evil. And that is what we, we try to get at. So, uh, hey, um, uh, welcome aboard. Let me welcome folks. Uh, let me play the last one, then I welcome everybody. Uh, this is, listen to Hallie Jackson. She was great. Ali Jackson strikes again. She got another congressman to make a fool out of himself on screen. Uh, check this out. She didn't even attempt to give him a chance to say something that wasn't true. She already told him what she expected him to say. He didn't say it, so he looks kind of silly. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. Before I let you go, I want to get you on this topic. Uh, I've seen your tweets, I've read your tweets and your statements about the president's legal fights here. But I have to ask you, when Joe Biden, when he wins the Electoral College majority on Monday, will you acknowledge then that he is the legitimately elected president of this country? I don't think I'm willing to acknowledge uh, a winner in, in this race until we've gone through the legal battles. Uh, I have, I have so absolutely no doubt. 36 of those no 53 doubt. cases presented by the president and his allies have been thrown out by judges. It's not the media or pundits deciding these cases. It's judges who are saying there is no evidence these legal battles are unsubstantiated and as you know on December 14th the electoral college vote will be locked in and Joe Biden will be formally the president-elect that's not good enough for you I want to see evidence presented to the Supreme Court and I am convinced that fraud took place in Wisconsin Michigan uh, Pennsylvania Georgia and possibly Arizona and I think okay. there's evidence Congress out there and I, all of the 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 electoral materials the election materials are, have to be presented Okay. Uh, Congressman Palmer, we appreciate your time. We do have to note there has been no evidence of widespread fraud in this election, and that is a determination made by judges uh, and not members of the media. Again, we appreciate your time talking to us about a number of topics this morning. To the point, it's not the media. Judges have already shown that there has not been fraud, numero uno. Numero dos, he will be the president-elect on Monday. I'm just asking you if you're going to acknowledge it. Whether you acknowledge it or not, it doesn't really matter because that is what the fact is going to be. If you want to remain in your alternate state of reality, if you want to fool the people who follow you, the people who elected you and give them a false sense of something else can happen, that's on you. Now, the next point is it is time for you guys to be penalized for putting the country through this and giving the innocent uh, people who voted for Donald Trump some expectation that something can change. Shame on you guys. 
Shame on them because a lot of people are going to think. We have Tank 28 believing that Trump is going to be president. We have Angela Caraway believe that Trump is going to be president. Uh, and I, well, I, I think uh, I think Lee Grant is uh, Lee Grant knows the, f the the reality. Hey Lee, I hope you are a part of our posse. If you're not a part of our posse, Lee, I expect you, brother, to click that join button because you are integral part of our uh, of our talk here, brother. So please click that join button. I want you as a member of our PDR posse. We love conservatives too as well. Um, anyhow, let, let, let's go ahead and salute everybody. Uh, Bridge MCP, welcome aboard. Tank 28, uh, welcome. Uh, let's see, our new person that I've never seen before, Angela Caraway. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Angela says, um, ha, 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 Biden lost the, the loss. He stole the election. Only time will tell. I'll visit your channel when Trump resume his rightful place in the White House. Okay, let me tell you, whether he resumes or not, uh, Miss Caraway, rest assured that you are absolutely welcome here and want you to be a part of the discussion here, okay, my friend? Uh, and I'm not saying that, I, I, that, and I really mean that all the people here know that when I say these things, I really mean these things. And by the way, you should get my book. Here we go. Uh, it's worth it then you'll see that what I'm saying is real. I really want us to communicate. Continuing to say hi to our people. Let's see. Continuing to say hi to our people. Who else is here? Uh, who else is here? Who else is here? Paul Fleming. Welcome aboard, Lee Grant. Lee, I want you in the posse, Lee. Come on. Hit that join button, Lee. I want you in the posse. Mark Smith from London. Squido, I'm burning some karma incense. You do what you got to do, my brother. You do what you got to do. Okay, I got Lee already. I got Rodney. And, uh, Bruce Pollard, my brother. How you doing, sir? Thank you for being here. And um, you always have something sensible to say. Yes, you're right. It is Trump, brother. It is Trump. It is Trump. It is Trump. I think I got Paul Fleming already. Count going up the ladder, going up the ladder, going up the ladder. Alan Drews, welcome aboard. The problem is the machines. Uh, you know, we've had uh, the expert. He was on MSNBC today. Um, He's been on our show several times. Uh, <laughs> man, what's wrong with my mind? It's my brother, my good friend, uh, the guy, the devoter guy. How could I forget his name? Anyhow, he was on the, um, the, the Greg Palace. Greg is going to kill me if he ever sees this clip. Greg Palace has been on our show several times, and he says voter machines are really not a big issue. And he knows his stuff. I've always, I hated those voter machines without the audit trail. But he said there are so few of them, it's generally not electoral. It doesn't matter electorally in general, he, he told me. I'm just taking it from the expert. I got to listen to the expert. Mark Smith, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see who else is here. Uh, I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. Let's see. If I miss you, just send me another email to the bottom of the list and I'll get back to it. I think I got Lee Grant already. Uh, who else is here? Oh, my head hurts. And that, that I have an interview after this. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see. Going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. All right. Tank 28 has been dominating this thing. Th <laughs> okay. Let me go, go all the way down and see who else I can find out. If there's anybody else. Let's see. Okay. Paul M. Lombardo. Como estas, hermano? Is Lombardo Spanish or, 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 or Portuguese, I am not, or Italian. I'm not sure which one. It's I know it's one of the uh, one of the um, Latin languages, I believe. But anyhow, uh, says that means if you make 30k middle class, 10k puts you in poverty. 30k is poverty here for a family, brother. I mean, 30k is not a lot of money in America, especially if you don't live in some sort of a rural town or something like that. So they had a piece on Morning Joe of how well the machines work. Oh, they did. Okay. Uh, thanks for telling me. Italian, Italian. Okay, brother. Italian, Italian. And you're coming in from, um, you're coming in from Periscope. Anyhow, folks, I got to get out of here. I got another interview that's coming up right now. So um, please uh, remember, support us. Please go ahead. And if you're not on YouTube... Go ahead and click on this link here and become a part of our posse. I ask you so kindly. Uh, if you are already on YouTube, please click the join button after we get out of here and become a, a member. As well, if you want to get our book, I'm going to put our book back in there again. Here is a book. 
Uh, that's how you get it on Amazon. But if you want to get it at our store, just go ahead and click right here. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. First of all, thank you so kindly for all being here. Love you all. My name is Egberto Willies. You know how I end this program. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.